The introduction of PD-1 immune checkpoint inhibitors into clinical practice has led to improved outcomes for patients with advanced non-small cell lung cancer with no actionable mutations. But an excessively activated immune system increases the risk of immune-related adverse events, or IRAEs, that can affect any organ with symptoms ranging from mild to severe. Although the mechanisms of IRAEs are still under investigation, studies have shown that T-cell, antibody, and cytokine responses may be involved. Occasional any-grade toxicities of PD-1 and PD-L1 inhibitors include fatigue, headache, arthralgia, rash, pruritus, diarrhea, hepatitis, and endocrinopathies. Most IRAEs occur within six months of treatment, but can manifest almost immediately after treatment initiation, or more than one year into treatment. Some have even been reported months or years after discontinuation of therapy. More serious IRAEs are pneumonitis and colitis. Symptoms of pneumonitis include cough, shortness of breath, fast heart rate, rapid breathing, and wheezing, although some people may have no symptoms at all. Checkpoint inhibitor-induced pneumonitis typically occurs two and a half months after the start of treatment and is diagnosed using a combination of imaging techniques like chest X-ray and CT to look for visual signs of changes and bronchoscopy or lung biopsy to rule out other causes of lung inflammation. Symptoms of colitis generally occur six to eight weeks after beginning treatment and patients may present with diarrhea, abdominal pain, blood and stool, fever, and vomiting. Evaluating a patient for checkpoint inhibitor-induced colitis involves CT imaging and endoscopy. Worsening of symptoms, including crampy abdominal pain that comes and goes, loss of appetite, constipation, vomiting, and inability to have a bowel movement or pass gas may be a sign of a bowel obstruction making it difficult to pass digested food through the bowel and is a medical emergency. Appropriate management of all IRAEs requires early recognition by routine monitoring, prompt intervention, and continued education for both the patients and the care team.